All right. Well, we can always expect everyone to log in over the next couple minutes. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, we're just going to get started. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you all for joining us um, from all over the world. My name is Graham Emmerman. I'm your host for today. Um, we are very excited to have you for a, a, a really great webinar today. Um, this is the Machine Metrics webinar series. Uh, this, this webinar is called How to Drive a Successful Machine Monitoring Implementation, uh, a bit of background into what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, the journey to achieving value only begins when manufacturing companies take that leap into Industry 4.0 and machine monitoring. Industry 4.0 is not just a project when you consider that most projects have a beginning and an end. Instead, it's really a long-term strategy that requires continuous cultural adoption and evolution. When, when a company takes its first steps into digitalization, a commitment is essentially made to a new way of doing business. And that, that commitment begins at the shop floor all the way to the boardroom and across the organization. This commitment requires resilience, leadership, and more often than not, some guidance from those who've been there before. And I have good news from those of you who are here today because you do not have to do this alone. Um, so first of all, I'm very excited to have our special guest here today. Uh, his name is Michael Unman. He's the CEO and founder of Pure Precision OEE. Give everyone a wave, Mike. Thanks for having you. I'm really ha happy to have you here today. And for this webinar, we're going to talk about how manufacturers can improve their chances of driving successful Industry 4.0 implementations. Uh, Michael has extensive experience working with companies to achieve value with technology systems, and, uh, and that's really given him these unique insights into day-to-day -day operations for manufacturers, including, you know, where things often go wrong and how to avoid those pitfalls. So, Mike, great, great to have you here. Um, for those of you that already know me, um, my name is Graham Immerman. I'm the VP of Marketing here at Machine Metrics. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you all here today. Uh, for, for yet another uh, piece of the series. Um, brief uh, background on the agenda. So, you know, we're going to start off uh, as we do usually, for those of you that don't know us, with just a quick introduction to machine metrics. Um, and then we're going to talk to Mike. It's just going to be a conversation today. Um, and then we're going to get into a Q&A section. But before we get started, I just want to like hit a couple quick notes. Um, this webinar is being recorded for those of you that are concerned that dip out early, uh, but we will be sending a link to the webinar after the recording. So fear not, you will get a webinar recording link and it will be sent to you within 24 or 48 hours after the webinar. Um, you know, secondly, your questions are absolutely welcome. Uh, you know, feel free to use that Q&A section within the Zoom navigation to ask these questions anytime. We'll do our best to get to them in real time, but sometimes, uh, it just requires us to wait a little bit, um, you know, because we're in the middle of another topic, but we'll be sure to get to those as, much, as quickly as we can. Uh, of course, feel free to always talk amongst yourselves in, in the chat area uh, within the Zoom Q&A. Uh, we oftentimes see some really great, uh, you know, sub-conversations happening there, and, you know, that's always a really good time. Um, so um, that's kind of like before we get started. Um, and, you know, just to, 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 to uh, plug, you know, our next webinar that we have coming along uh, will be actually a, a product uh, launch, which is really exciting for us. Uh, we're introducing our, our operator dashboard, as we call internally, OpDash 2.0. And with this latest version of this, this amazing technology, uh, the operators uh, for manufacturers can now become even more involved with the factory's continuous improvement effort. Just the ability to add contextual data to real-time streaming data from these machines provides a new depth of insight into what's happening and a new tool to drive action with bottom line impact. Um, on this, in this webinar, which is gonna be April 13th at 2 p.m. Eastern time, our panelists, including uh, our, one of our co-founders and CTO, Jacob Lozier, uh, as well as Justin Garland and Josh Fish, two of our other rock stars, uh, are going to be sharing these latest updates to, to this, this amazing product. Uh, the reason behind these changes and the real world impact that it's going to be having across our customer plants. And you'll get an inside look at some of the most popular use cases uh, with this product, including the ability to start, stop, display, 
uh, jobs, setups, changeover stages, instructions to track planned process times and identify areas of improvement. Uh, the ability to create workflows that integrate with ERP systems, the leverage real-time production data to schedule and organize jobs, triggering notifications uh, that optimize or automate inefficient processes like material delivery, tooling changes, uh, highlighting bottlenecks that are generating the most downtime, um, and identifying process uh, inadequacies with this operator insights. So you can analyze quality data, human feedback from these operators to build and deploy alert systems um, to, to, uh, to uh, employees when, when these issues occur. So I'm pretty excited about that one, as you can tell. Um, but now, um, just a bit of background on us and, and what we do. We just have two quick videos. The first one is on machine metrics, and the second one is a new case study that we just launched. Manufacturing produces more data than any other major industry in the world, yet has been slow to adopt the digital mindset transforming industries like agriculture, banking, and healthcare. Manual data collection is time-consuming and inaccurate. Operating on gut instinct alone leads to inefficiencies and poor decision-making that affect every component of a company's operation, from significant downtime to production losses. We're in the age of Industry 4.0, and manufacturers need every edge they can get to stay competitive. Real-time actionable data is that edge. Your machines generate hundreds of data points every millisecond, all of which tell a story of what happened in the past, what's happening now, and what will happen next. It's time you harness that data and jumpstarted your factory's digital transformation. Machine Metrics provides an intuitive, flexible monitoring platform that easily collects data from any piece of manufacturing equipment and transforms it into powerful, actionable insights. Why does machine metrics succeed where so many others have failed? The key is in our ease of use and time to value. The machine metrics IoT platform is easy to install and implement. You'll start visualizing data in a matter of hours. Plug and play edge connectivity harnesses and standardizes machine data across your entire fleet. Our intuitive out-of-the-box apps are easy to use and drive rapid improvements in efficiency. Training is minimal. Real-time shop floor dashboards, machine production and condition monitoring, historical reporting and automated alerts instantly enable visibility and analytics to help your team understand the big picture. Build your own apps or seamlessly connect with your current shop floor systems to easily integrate machine data across your digital factory. Machine Metrics will help your team deliver the right information to the right person at the right time. Identify potential bottlenecks before they occur. Update cycle time standards in real time to improve pricing and scheduling. Detect anomalies and predict maintenance events before they cause downtime. Empower your workforce with step-by-step -step instructions to optimize processes. Enable lights out manufacturing with remote monitoring and alarm notifications. With machine metrics, any manufacturer can start leveraging their machine data immediately to drive improvements and provide the foundation for scaling data across their operations. It's time to start transforming your factory, all with the click of a button. Harness the power of machine data so it can become your competitive advantage. Cool. Uh, no, we don't want, who wants to watch it again? Just kidding, no, we don't have to do that. Um, go on the next slide here. Um, so uh, I wish you could have all been there when we had uh, 50 different voiceover people doing that, that voice. It was, it was really funny, um, but, uh, but no, for neither here nor there. Um, so, so now I just wanted to show you guys one more quick thing. Um, so let's let one of our customers tell, tell a quick story for you guys. Fairview started in 1962. So we're in the uh, aerospace industry. We're in the medical and defense, a third generation family owned business. I, I just loved it so much, I came after college and worked my way up and 
that's why I know the big benefit of having machine metrics to help us because I understand the machining side of the business and what that can do for the shop floor. I've said it to this day, I can't imagine now that I have machine metrics, having a shop that doesn't have machine monitoring software in it. I'm a big data guy, because all the data we were getting was next day. Machine metrics has changed that whole game for us because I'm getting live data every second of the day. There's a bunch of benefits that we've been able to see, especially from sitting in, in the chair upstairs to be able to have visibility to all the machines at any given moment on the spot. So um, that's helping us increase efficiency. And when you go into another machine shop and don't have this versus coming into a machine shop that does have something like this, if I was a customer looking at it, I would be saying, you know what, I think that I'm gonna go with company B that has machine metrics because there's a whole different level of uh, control I think that that shop has than a company that doesn't have it. Um, when they know that we're gonna be able to live track every single job that goes through the shop, it just gives you that pulse, a constant pulse of what's going on at your shop at all times. I think that's gonna be a huge attraction to any customer. You wanna be able to give your customer the best price out of the gate and, every, and they make money and we make money. It's gonna be huge because I'll be able to have my phone, a tablet with me, and I can pull this right up. And when they ask about a hot job that is in the shop, I can show them, hey, here's it is, here's where it's running. This is how many hours it's been running, all from my computer and anywhere in the world. So I think that's, again, more selling power for Fairview, um, which helps helps the whole cause. Uh, ERP software that tracks everything is Epicor, and Machine Metrics has actually already partnered with them before we got into it. And uh, it ties right in with our data tracking and everything like that. So it was a perfect fit. The operator logs into that job on its on Epicor and it automatically triggers machine metrics to start tracking the stuff through the machine metrics software as well as the Epicor software. The parts are actually input right back into the Epicor system. So the operator just has to double check and not have to actually do typos or anything like that when they're entering the quantity of parts that were done for the day. One of the biggest things I'll say that I can say about any company and Machine Metrics is huge on this is the customer service. Um, they have an email system. Whenever you have any issue, you shoot an email over to them and you're getting responses within the hour. And they're working on the ticketed item and, and you're getting response, live feedback through email. So it's that's been probably the most impressive thing that I've seen with Machine Metrics is that, that level of customer service. Honestly, there, there was really no downside. The payback isn't, you're probably getting paid back in three to six months. But even when they came and installed all the software for us, you know, we were talking, we were down maybe an hour or two. Um, so it was really easy and simple to implement. And, you know, you're getting way more of a benefit than worried about your machine being down two hours for, for what you're going to gain in the long run. I can't envision, now that I've had machine metrics, going back to a shop where I am not able to monitor the machines on a daily basis, and it's changed the game here so much for us. I think that's the biggest benefit of machine metrics. That's not what we want. We do not want to see that again, but maybe we do. And uh, uh, real catchy music there. And also I would just like to throw out as a quick note that um, uh, that gentleman, uh, uh, Mike Mullen, who, who is a certified uh, manufacturing genius, uh, has the largest screen that I have ever seen in his office. And it is just ginormous. And he's just watching his factory all day. And it's, it's pretty awesome to see. Um, so anyways, um, you know, uh, as we said, you know, today we have hundreds of manufacturers that have connected thousands of machines to our platform, uh, anywhere from mom and pop job shops to some of the largest manufacturing companies in the world. These companies are leveraging our plug and play machine connectivity, monitoring and analytics to optimize their shop floor productivity, increase their manufacturing for the utilization and maximize the profitability of their factory floor. Um, now, uh, enough, enough about, um, enough about us, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause my screen share here, and, and I, I'm gonna introduce you know we got we have Mike Unman here. Great to have you, Mike. Thanks for being here, uh, Mike. Uh, before we get started, would you be uh, willing to uh, allow me the the joy of polling our audience to ask them a question? Absolutely. All right, great. So so for those of you who are here, I'm gonna launch a poll, and we're really interested in just learning about you know today, current state, right? How are you currently capturing insights from your manufacturing operates, operations today? Specifically, your machine assets and your people. Um, 
you're the, some of the answers that we've gotten are, we're not, but we'd like to be. Uh, manually with pen and paper, I was on a great call yesterday. Um, that was uh, uh, AWS is one of our partners and they were, they were doing a, a case study of one of our customers and the people at AWS couldn't comprehend that, that manually pen and paper is actually one of the most popular ways that things exist today. Um, and they, they just didn't understand. You know, we said, well, that's actually pretty normal. And I expect that to be a winner today. Um, automatically with real-time data collection through softwares like machine metrics or you know, prescriptively with sophisticated AI and machine learning based uh, systems. Uh, I'll just leave this up like for a few minutes and then, uh, and then I'll let it go, but feel free to, to fill that out as we go along. Now, Michael, uh, thank you for joining us today. We're super excited to have you here. I'd love for you just to tell me a bit about yourself, uh, your background, and, and your business. Okay. Thanks for uh, for the invitation. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. Um, so my background is in machining and manufacturing. I've uh, been a machinist for 40 years almost now. Um, started in a family business uh, and worked my way up in the family business and then went off and did my own thing. Um, currently, uh, Pure Precision is a manufacturer advisory. So we go into um, companies as a third party to help them build their continuous improvement culture, help them understand how to make their company better, how to measure the performance of their equipment. And um, that's, that's basically what we've been doing for the last 10 years. And I'm muted, not awesome. <laughs> uh, that's great. And like, you know, so, um, you know, you've got a background in manufacturing, obviously, uh, you know, it's funny how different people get into the industry. A lot of them, you know, have like family lineages in this space. Uh, yeah. you know, I mean, like what type of manufacturers do you work with? Do you have any like specificity? Do you work with all types of manufacturers? No, we work with all types of manufacturers. So we work from uh, small uh, mom and pop shops. We have five, six guys in a shop in a small, you know, industrial park to uh, Fortune 50 companies. I've been into some where they have hundreds of factories across the United States. Um, and believe it or not, those big companies need as much help as the little mom and pop shops do sometimes. They've uh, kind of missed the ball on, on the whole continuous improvement idea and what it is, you know, they're just running along, along on autopilot and there's no, uh, no thoughts to what's going on down in the shop floor. Yeah, that's, a, that's a, a, an interesting note. And we found very similar, uh, you know, we, lo we look at things as there's a, you know, a plant level, right? And that plant uh, yeah. could be, you know, just a, a mom and pop factory, right? Or it could be, you know, uh, a large organization with 50 plants, but you know, these, these, uh, you know, when you're at the plant level, right, you never really know what you're going to find. Right. Um, and, and, and it's really interesting to make that, you know, the, that, that, um, that insight and that yeah. difference between the two. Now, when we were chatting before this webinar, I heard you use this phrase and I liked it, uh, because you have the hammer does not mean that the house is going to build itself. Can you tell us all what you mean by that? Yeah, so basically, if you have a hammer, uh, the hammer is going to sit there in your toolbox and the house is never going to be built unless you pick up the hammer and use the hammer, right? And I equate that machine monitoring to that hammer, right? You can bring machine monitoring to your shop, connect all your machines, bring all the monitors, put the monitors up, have that big monitor in his office, look at all the green and yellow and red. But unless you do anything about it and you don't use that tool, the improvements are not going to happen by themselves. You know, there'll be a little bit improvement machine monitoring right in the beginning because you get that Hawthorne effect going on in the, on the shop floor where people all of a sudden think, oh, everybody's watching. And then you get a little blip on the radar of a little bit improvement. But, you know, generally over time, you're not going to get that return on investment of your machine monitoring um, if you don't use that tool, right? You need to look at the data. You need to understand what the data is. Um, you know, I'll tell you, one of the companies I went to was a, one of those fortune 50 companies, right? Hundreds of factories all over the world. We were in the shop and they spent a ton of money on, on a machine monitoring and they have all the boards up there. And, and essentially all they were using it for is the supervisor would wait for a red light to go up on, a, on the monitor and he'd run out to the machine and find out why is the machine not running. And, you know, so it became this very expensive end on light as opposed to understanding what the data was and, and what to do with it. And that's where we come in. So, you know, machine monitoring is good and we'll come in there and we'll help you understand the data. We'll help you make sure you're collecting the right 
downtimes, not too many, not too little, the right exact ones. Um, and we can help you set up the system and then we'll show you how to read the data, how to consume that data to be able to make those improvements because um, end of the day, you know, the machine itself is what's creating the revenue. The machine's making the parts, the machine's making the widgets, right? Um, keeping that running is, is key. And that savings that you're getting from not having a machine down and understanding better, that's going straight to EBITDA, right? That's going straight to your bottom line of that machine's running more and down less. Yeah, it, it's it's really an interesting note. We see both, you know, we definitely see, you know, we go to a factory, right? You have some remarkable, you know, uh, cultures, right? That are set up for success, right? And you've got continuous improvement leads and you've got operator incentivization programs, right? And and everybody's, you know, in sync and knows what to do and is ready to go, right? And, and, and for there, you can create rapid value. But I think, you know, uh, I love your, your saying because it reminds me of one of my favorite sayings, which anybody who is on these webinars hears me say all the time, which is like, uh, there is no silver bullet, right? It's like, no matter how good a system is, right? Um, you know, you're going to need to be able to know how to use it. And I think that, you know, many manufacturers, uh, have, there's a fear that exists with this type of technology, right? And which is that, like, we don't know how to use it. Right. And we're not sure how to create results. And, my, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like um, manufacturers don't necessarily have to have that fear because there is uh, there is opportunity to get support uh, yes. with, with these approaches. So tell me a bit about how that works. Like, how, how do you support manufacturers? Uh, along yes. the way? So we typically will go in and we'll do a what we call a reconnaissance or we'll go in for a couple of days. We'll interview uh, shop floors. So. Something very important in our, so in my, myself and my team is that the operator, like that's the end of the supply chain as far as we're concerned, right? Everybody above them actually works for the operator. When the operator needs help on a program, he goes to a programmer, CNC programmer, and then that's his customer. His customer is the operator, right? He needs to supply that program correct. He needs uh, engineering help. He needs inspection help, gauges, you know, so the customer in the shop is the operator who's running the machine because if he doesn't get the help, the machine's not running. Right. So we go around the floor, we do our reconnaissance, we interview operators, we find out what their pain points are. We try to get a better understanding of, um, you know, what's causing the machine not to run. Um, you know, could it be maintenance issues? Is it they don't have the right tools? They don't have the right instruments. Um, we collect all this data ourselves and then we come back to um, the management supervisors and we say, look, you know, here are the steps we will need to take to help you improve the shop you have. And, and by the way, you know, the, the monitoring itself is good, but you need to change this and this to better understand what's going on in the floor. Uh, end of the day, again, it's, it's all about keeping those machines running. And, and a lot of times we go into shops and, you know, the big fix today is cut my labor costs, cut my labor costs, cut my labor costs, right? Well, if you don't have enough time to run one, two, three machines and the machine's down more than it should be, you know, cutting that labor and putting that one guy to three machines, maybe not be the right solution. It could be, but typically I find that, um, you know, we don't want the, uh, the bean counters up in the office running the shop floor, telling us how many guys should be running a machine. Yeah, it's really, you, you hit on two really interesting points there that, that I've always related to since I got here, which is that, um, you know, I don't have a background in manufacturing, I've been, but I've been in machine metrics four or five years now, and I've been in, you know, dozens of factories and learned a lot about the business. And I found it really interesting how the, the operators, the people that run the machine, right? Yet, you know, uh, one of our co-founders who was an operator previously, you know, I remember him saying to me, you know, operators get blamed all the time when things don't go right, uh, you know, and they almost are treated like on the bottom of the pecking order. And uh, another example of that was when some, I remember a long time ago, we had a prospect come to us and say like, hey, like I want a tool uh, so I can, you know, essentially point to this thing and show this operator what he did wrong. And I was like, interesting, you know, like it's an interesting approach. Like you could look at it very much the inverse, which is like, um, you know, you could give the operators a voice, right? By being able to collect this data. So, so for what it's worth, it sounds like this uh, new operator, uh, you know, capability that, that we're launching uh, in this next webinar sounds really timely for what it's worth. Um, and another great, it also kind of, uh, it, it, it struck another chord of me uh, in, in a great customer example. We had a customer come to us and they essentially believed that, you know, they, you know, due to marketers like myself, 
right? They, they, they needed predictive maintenance, right? Like this was the problem. They needed predictive yep. maintenance. They needed machine data coming off these machines and they needed to be able to drive predictive models. Well, turns out that wasn't really the problem. Um, you know, we start collecting data from these machines and, and lo and behold, the, um, you know, their, their processes around the machines were horrendous. You know, uh, setup times, change over times. You had operators, you know, essentially having to like walk to the materials department, walk to the tooling department, right? Yeah. And like, it was not set up to support them at the machine. Yep. Uh, and just by making, you know, but the question is, what do you do with that, right? So like, what do you do with that? And it sounds like, you know, Michael, it sounds like Pure Precision is really focused on helping them take those insights and make them actionable. Right. And it, it's something similar to what you just said, too. We had a, it was a machine, a uh, situation where they were monitoring machine and we've seen um, a rate that wasn't up to par, right? And we could see that it wasn't running as fast as it should be. And it was a Swiss screw machine, right? And so we started looking at data, diving into data, understanding what was going on. There was a lot of downtime every certain amount of parts. Well, we dove a little deeper and what we found out was that they're, um, inspection rate was every fifth part, he had to check the part on a comparator, mm -hmm. right? And guess where the comparator was? It was in the other department, right? A five minute walk, plus talk to this, talk to this guy, talk to this guy, right? So we did a little bit of math and this job was a repeat job. And honestly, we did the math and just from the data we collected from the machine monitoring and pull it together, we, we actually put a financial plan together to buy a comparator for that machine. And it paid for itself in three months, the comparator for the downtime that was lost for them walking around. And it was in like, it blew everybody's mind because nobody could like think about what was going on. And that's what the important thing is that you have to instill trust in the data, right? If they don't trust the data, you're not going to get anywhere. If everybody kind of blows it off, no, you got to trust that data because, and, and as long as the operators are being honest, right? Accurate and honest, they got to put in, why is the machine down? Because it's up to them to put in the, in the machine, in the machine metrics, like why is the machine down? You know, that's what gives you that return. And then by the way, you talked about communication, which is key. The hardest buy-in sometimes is the guys on the floor, right? Mm -hmm. Cause they think it's another, oh, it's another way the man's gonna watch me and he's looking over my shoulder. And the way we sell the machine monitoring to the operators is listen guys, this is a way, this is a communication tool for you to tell your bosses why you can't run that machine as quickly as they want, right? And by the way, you don't have to have the guy standing over your shoulder watching you the whole time, right? You tell them that I have to stop the machine to inspect the parts. I got to stop the machine because I have to change the oil or whatever the issues are. It's your tool to be able to communicate why you can't make that rate that everybody's expecting you to make, right? Um, and that's what kind of tells them and then they kind of buy into that and then they realize okay this is something for me it's not you know it's not another tool to monitor what i'm doing now every factory has its own culture right um you know just to go a little bit further down that road and i think you know um some cultures are you know better set up maybe for types of tools than others and are maybe more ready if you wanted to say like on a readiness index or maturity index right like how do you, when you go into a factory, right, and you see, you know, uh, culture A versus culture B, like, how does that change your approach? And like, uh, you know, like, you know, like, do you have different strategies for different types of factories? And, and yeah, it's, yeah. it's the same as, yeah, it's the same as like a manager, right? You've got different employees, everybody's got different personality, and everybody takes advice differently. One guy takes advice as, don't tell me what to do. And the other guy's like, okay, go and you go and do it, right? So, as a consultant, we have to look at the same way. We go into a company and, and you know, when you say about strategy, you know, continuous improvement, it's a strategy, right? Um, it's not a project that has a beginning and end. It's just a beginning and it's continuously always changing and evolving, right? It's a plan, it just goes on and on. And when you talk to a customer and they, and they have no, they just think that it's like a start and stop thing then I know I have to try to un get them to understand that this is going to go on forever. And, and by the way, you need to get buy-in from the guys on the floor all the way to the guys in the, in the, in the office, the C-suite guys, because um, if you don't have that buy-in from everybody in the company, it's going to fail. 
you know, if, if there's one blip in there that they don't think or they don't trust that the mon machine monitoring is going to help them, you need to make sure you're able to convince that person that it's going to help them. It's going to make their business better. It's going to, I mean, if you watched that last video you showed there, I mean, I get it was a marketing video, but I can tell you from experience, I have more guys than none that talk just like that guy in a second video, that once they have the monitoring in there and they are setting up and they're looking at data and they're using the data, they realize how did they do business before it. <laughs> yeah. I, I go back to when I work with my dad, you know, my dad's first in the morning, he'd come in, have his coffee. And the first thing he did, he'd walk around the whole shop and he would see what's going on in the shop. And then what do you do after lunch? You walk around the whole shop after break, walk around the whole shop. Well, hell, I can do that now automatically. I can do it from my phone. And not that I want to sit at the table. I still want to engage with the people. Right. But also what that leads into is also is, uh, you know, your Gemba's, your Kaizen events, right? You need to take the data you're getting from the monitoring system and use that in your Gemba every morning, right? So the operators see that, you know, every time I'm pressing that I'm stopping because I have this inspection, 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 somebody's watching that data, somebody's looking at it. It's not just coming in one ear out the other and, you know, gets filed in that black hole next to your desk, right? You got to make sure everybody understands the data's there, we're using it, and it's good data and we're able to help the shop with the data. Yeah, it's it, it, it's really interesting and like almost like assigning those roles. We we had a we have a customer that's taking a really unique approach to do that today. For example, where um, a, a couple like things that they're doing. Firstly, um, they are trying to almost like assign people to a a what they call the digital factory squad, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 you know, I was talking to them and I was like, you know, like do you guys have any um, you know. Um, you know, uh, operator incentivization programs. He's like, to be honest with you, the thing that gets uh, my team the most excited is 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 swag. And I was like, really? Like, it's it's like swag. It's like, yeah. Like, we do these limited edition like runs of stuff, right? And and people will do anything for it. <laughs> and 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 he's like, you know, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some of these limited edition like digital factory squad things, and everybody who does it, you know, has to essentially like go through a brief training on on you know what we're doing with the data yep. and, and it was a really brilliant idea by the customer because you know firstly they're like hey we're gonna we're gonna incentivize people with something that they already love and then we're going to train them uh, as a part of that so they can get that and not only will it be limited but everyone else is going to want that swag too yep. so to get that they're going to have to go through the training and it was really interesting like like, uh, tell me like about like what that, that process looks like for you, you know, like you go into these factories, right. Um, you know, like, tell me about some of the, like, like the, the immediate benefits that you see, because many of the companies that we work with, you know, like you said, they need to believe, right. They need to, you know, see results. Like, tell me what that looks like and, and where does this help and how, where does it help quickly? Where does it help in the long term? Uh, any context around that? Yep. Yeah. So your your immediate low hanging fruit, you know that low hanging fruit term there, is going to be your your um, your downtime resolution, your high high offender, so to speak, right? So with with the operators putting in exactly what why it's stopping, you'll be able to stop some of that. So you know you could probably expect ten percent gain in throughput just from that, right? Because now the operators are telling you what's going on. And by the way, now I can do real-time resolution, right? I can set up alerts that if, if this machine gets to a certain percentage, boom, I'm going after it. I'm having the team go out there. And by the way, find from the operator, find out from the operator what they need, what's going on, why is it happening, right? Don't just go out there and accuse. You go out there and you kind of talk to the operator and say, you know, it looks like you're having a problem. What can we do for you, right? That And just like the swag, right, it gives that operator that little... Um, good feeling that, you know, he's not alone in this, right? We're here to help, right? The, the, and by the way, that terrible thing for us is that that consulting stigma. You know, we go into the shop, we're, you know, we're in our shirts and our pants. And and by the way, myself and none of my guys, we're, no, we're not MBAs, right? So we don't go, we go talk to the operators. And once we get past the point and they realize that, yeah, we will operate as ones too, it helps us interact with the clients and the, and the shop floor guys, right? Um, because that stigma of the consultant in a shop, it, it gets really old real fast when you, it happens. So, but anyway, yeah. So, you know, low hanging fruit is right away, get rid of some of the downtimes. Um, 
The other one too could be uh, machine problems, right? Uh, one of the, I'll give you another quick story. It was actually a turret press, right? And the turret press was um, first shift, ran great. Second shift, ran great. Third shift, downtime, maintenance, mm -hmm. down for maintenance, down for maintenance, all these stoppages in there, right? So um, the next day we looked at the data, we're like looking at, okay, something's going on. So the supervisor and myself, we stayed later and we caught the third shift guy coming in and kind of went up to him and was like, you know, I, looks like you have a lot of problem with the machine, what's going on? And he's like, yeah, well, the machine stops because it hits this travel thing, you know, switch goes off, I have to reset the machine, it takes so much time. Well, first shift and second shift figured out the fix, how they circumvent this switch from getting triggered. <laughs> Nobody told the third shift guy, right? And by the way, before machine monitoring was installed there, that was going on for like months and months and months, right? So you can just imagine all the lost opportunity there that they didn't know before until they started monitoring these machines. Once they start monitoring, they catch these things because what happens is you don't have the communication first to second shift, bad thing. But anyway, it was caught and it was caught because we started machine monitoring, right? So you're going to find all these little nuances that are going on in the shop that now you can now spread that information, what was once a tribal, even shift tribal information and spread it across the whole company. I think that's, for me, that's one of the things that really speaks the most, right? Is that, you know, many factories, whether you're one of the largest companies in the world, the smallest, right? You have this tribal knowledge, right? That in many ways is siloed with certain employees, right? And and, you know, a good example that we have recently was just the notion that like um, certain operators can hear problems, right, on machines, right, yep. right? literally, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a noise, it's a frequency of sound that comes from these machines. And what's kind of amazing is that that frequency has like a digital signature, right, a, a, and, and it gets visible in data. And that's something that, you know, machine metrics actually had a bit of a breakthrough on last year. And, you know, for example, like we're actually able to, to catch those like harmonic sounds, right, that are related to like tools like wearing down or, yep. or you know, uh, anomalies occurring in these tools. And what's, what's amazing about that is that like, well, if you had maybe one operator that knows what that sounds like, you can democratize that, like that, that harmonic, that sound in an alert to every employee. Um, and that can really help you when it comes down to like, you know, rolling out, you know, a use case to more than one operator, right? At one more than one machine or, you know, finding ways. So it's, I really do love that, that concept of like, how do you, um, how do you like take tribal knowledge and democratize it to the rest of, of the factory? And um, just for all of our attendees, I just want to give you guys a heads up, you know, um, we've got a couple more talking points, but I do really urge you that if you have questions that come up, thoughts at all, don't hesitate to drop them into the Q&A or even the chat. And we'll take them on. Otherwise, I have infinite questions, and I'll just keep asking Michael for them for the rest of the time. But um, so we talked about some of the things that like create success, right? Um, you know, having a strong culture, having like some some KPIs, right? The achieving value quickly with low hanging fruit, right? Not just being the hammer, right? But using the hammer, right? right. Um, where have you seen? these in, industry for implementations fail? Like where, where do things go wrong? Right, so actually that's pretty easy. Um, the biggest failure is when the project is project, when the strategy is siloed to a certain group of people in the company, right? So you might only have some, the manufacturing engineering group is working on the, um, is working on the machine monitoring right? Installing and implementing it and understanding data. Um, if you're not letting everybody be involved, if you're not getting everybody involved, right? And probably one of the most important persons in the beginning to get involved is your IT department because mm. they're going to be key into the implementation, right? You got to have, to, now you're connecting machines out to the cloud if you're doing a cloud implementation. Um, so you're going to need the IT department there, right? Because if, if they're not bored in, then that's going to fail there. Um, you're going to need the um, operators for sure, because again, if you don't have their buy-in, um, they're not going to use it correctly. They're not going to give you the feedback on why the machine's down. They're going to ignore it, and then you have this big bucket of undefined downtime, which you can't you can't 
figure out why the machine stopped. Um, supervisors, they have to understand that you're not taking away from the operator's ability to run the machine. It's again, it's an enhancement for them to understand what's going on. And then right up to the C-suite, up to the owners of the company or the executive of the company, they have to realize this is a tool that they're gonna be investing in, right? Um, it's hard as a shop, and I know I've, I've had my own shop too already. So it's hard as a shop to, as a shop to invest in the money in something like this if it's not producing a product, right? Um, you you have to look at it more as what's going to be the return on it and how how is going to get a benefit out of it, right? It's not making parts, so I'm not going to be able to sell anything. What's what am I going to get out of it? And then if you understand that for every minute you get back from downtime and preventive maintenance and all that um, is a dollar going to your EBITDA and you can convert that financially, that'll also make the accounting department happy too, right? They'll be understanding of it. Um, if you, the whole failure comes from miscommunication through the organization and not having everybody involved, right? Absolutely. That's the key thing. Everybody's gotta be involved. Everybody has to know their specific benefits, what it's gonna do to help them. Right. And, and by the way, everybody has a different, you know, the output of mon machine monitoring is different for everybody else. How it helps everybody is different. It's a great point, right? It's not always the same. Uh, it, 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 it's so true. You know, uh, I think everybody finds where their, their inefficiencies are in different places. You know, we have, we've had customers, for example, that have leveraged the data they collect. Um, this is actually from a, an interview that we did yesterday with a, with a, a very large customer that leverage this data to come to the conclusion that they should insource a lot of work <laughs> because you know they were like wow this is going to be this is like the beginning of an insourcing project for us right yeah. um and, and by understanding how well we produce um you know that's going to be critical for us in order to do that so like but like what is our actual capacity today you know like we don't mm -hmm. want to buy machines that we don't need right um you know so that's like a really i think a really strong use case that we just see is like understanding capacity Right. And That's interesting because um, we, you know, when you look at OEE and TEEP, right, you know, right. TEEP is that machine 24 7, 365, where OEE is when the machine's available to run, right? Uh, one of my clients, the, uh, he was VP of manufacturing, you know, he always looked at when was the machine not running? Because when his, his plant managers and his site supervisors goes, oh, I need a new milling machine or I need a new lathe. The first thing he went to is he looked at, you know, when was the machine not running and how many hours I have of that? And then he'll go, no, you don't need a new machine. You need to run your machine more, right? And mm. without monitoring the machines, you'd never know that really, right? You could get a guesstimate and figure it out in ERP and all that. And by the way, you know, ERP and, and machine monitoring, they're complements to each other. There's no, I have a lot of people that go, I don't need to machine monitor because I have an ERP. Well, no, because the ERP is tracking that person, right? And that person, by the way, is not, you're not getting a granular hour by hour, minute by minute, what that person's doing, right? It's a complement to ERP, what machine monitoring is. It gives you different data that you can use differently, right? And now with all the APIs, um, it makes it easier to, to connect the two together. So when you're Logging in a job in one, it goes right into your machine monitor, machine metrics like that too. Um, yeah. And by the way, that new uh, feature you're bringing out with the op for the operator to put information in is huge because I can tell you stories about um, some ERP system where the operators are logging and logging out, and we opened up that communication to uh, part for them to be able to tell about the job as opposed to having a little notebook on the machine telling what happened during the day in a job, it allows the operator to tell what happened, you know, uh, end mill, three quarter inch end mill, you know, wears down a lot and da da da. And don't use this brand, use this brand. And all that tribal knowledge that maybe is in a notebook that will get thrown away. Now you've got it digitally documented in your system, right? And always there. And if you can search it, you can find out what's going on. It, it's, that's huge, huge. Yeah, and we see um, there's even some other, I, I won't, I won't uh, get everybody too excited uh, before the webinar. I want you guys to join for that. It's going to be a really great one. But, you know, we're even releasing some other really cool uh, technology there, like the ability to add additional application tabs to that interface. So, like, if you use work instructions, if you use some other tools on your factory floor, like uh, a CMMS, right, just being able to open up those other tools, like, right from that one interface. Um, to your point, right, with everything have, 
APIs, right, and connectivity, you know, we really see a, a future on the factory floor that, you know, like more like manually driven systems like MES over time are going to be kind of going the wayside to automation tools, right? Um, and you'll be able to automate those data entry and those, those various actions on the factory once you set what you said really well earlier, the foundation, understanding what the problems are. Right. And like, you know, like we have a customer today that's uh, automating uh, uh, material reorders based on like consumption of materials, right? And they just, they can just do that now because they understand where their bottleneck is. You're just getting materials or they would run out because they didn't have good models built around that or, you know, driving automated tool change systems, right? Or I love that one you said earlier, it was super cool that uh, that automation system that just, uh, you know, eradicated a downtime for that manufacturer. It's really cool. Um, I want to I wanna make sure that I get Bla uh, Blaze's question in because he asked it. Um, and I appreciate you asking the question. Uh, Blaze wants to know how big your team is that, that, that like, you know, that you know, how big is your team? Um, you know, how many people get, you know, unleashed on a, on a project? So um, obviously with COVID team got reduced a little bit last year. Um, no traveling, you know, typically we're all road warriors. We leave on Sunday night, we come back on Friday. So current team is myself and I have two associates who work with me. Um, I've had up to four. Um, when we go on sites, depending on what's needed, we scale up or down for the site. And I have some uh, strategic partners that I work with too. Like I have one strategic partner that's focused totally on scheduling and lead scheduling. Mm -hmm. And that's what he does. And he's very you know, smart in that. Um, typically, I'll do all the strategic planning, all the strategic uh, ideas. And then my other team, are, they're the tactical side of it. They go out and they basically... Um, implement whatever we um, we come up with. They are the ones to talk on the shop floor. They do all the training. They set up any kind of, um, if we got to set up some special uh, dashboards for the client or do any kind of uh, changes on the current mon machine monitoring to make it work better, right? They're the ones doing it. So yeah, right now it's just um, the three of us, but um, you know, the engagements, they range from uh, typically a week to one client we had, we were there for a couple of years, on and off for a couple of years. So um, all sorts of different engagements. And, you know, we have some other value adds to being all of us being machinists, sometimes there or talk, ask us to do um, deal with some high level macro programming where we're doing uh, data collection in the machine with probes, we're probing a part, measuring it, sending that data out to their uh, SPC system, all right? right. Um, some of the times it's okay. We don't look at like measuring the part and trying to replace the CMM, but sometimes you get, you know, it's a 10 hour cycle. You'll get three hours into it. You want to measure a feature, make sure that feature is okay. You don't want to get 10 hours into it and find out that a feature you made seven hours ago was bad and you just lost seven hours of time, right? So we do um, probing. We put macro high level programming, uh, high level programming macros, um, and you know, those are the kind of things, anything to do with the machining world is where we're, that's our realm. That's awesome. And, and it just, that just kind of reminded me of like a use case that, you know, uh, someone, you know, brought to my attention recently, which was just, you know, um, you know, machine metrics being able to feed, uh, you know, data back into, you know, uh, CAD CAM systems, SPC systems, right. And you could really do like real time quality right? Or a uh, real time feedback for that product design. Because like you said, you can't, um, you know, certain parts of the process can be automated, but like you definitely don't want to make a bunch of, you know, production runs without a spec stuff. Right. right. Um, and that's easier said than done. You need to have certain like knowledge to be able to see that, but by automating some of the like painful parts around it, like getting the data, getting the yep. data from one system to another, like you can really accelerate use cases around that. Um, yep. that's, that's really cool to hear that you work with them on that. Um, so I just want to make sure, uh, because we've got a couple minutes left, um, if anybody else out there has any other questions, um, you know, please feel free to ask them now, uh, either in the Q&A or in the chat. It's been a really great conversation so far, Mike. I've really enjoyed it. Um, and, and, and until we get another question, um, another one from me, what steps do you recommend for these companies, you know, to get, you know, to get started, like what's, you know, give, give me like a, a rundown of like, you know, your top recommendations, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's this old uh, consultant terminology, you know, because it's consultant words, right? It's like, don't try to boil the ocean, right? Mm -hmm. Don't go in and 
think you're going to go to every machine, install it, every machine and turn it all at once because what you're going to get is information overload, right? Take baby steps, go, you know, grab a couple of machines, implement those, start getting some data, go to the next, you know, rinse and repeat, right? Go through the whole shop that way. Um, and don't think that you're going to, like I said, it's not, that's not the end all. You're not going to turn it on, get this data and you're going to just, you got to look at the data. I have to understand the data. If you don't understand the data, that's when you bring somebody like us in there to help you understand the data, right? Nobody's expecting a machinist who runs a machine shop to all of a sudden be a data analyst, right? Um, you know, we work with a lot of different systems. We see a bunch of different data from Excel right up to, you know, machine metrics and, and, and that. So we're able to look at that data. And then, by the way, not every, um, and you can attest to this probably, not every built-in dashboard is the one you want, right? Um, if you're gonna get a system, you need a system that can uh, allow a software like Power BI. Like, let me build my own dashboard. I want, I want to see this, this, and this. I'm not worried about all this. I just want to see this. You know, with Power BI, go right into machine metrics and point to the data and we can build custom dashboards. Um, mm -hmm. and, and Power BI too is, you know, it can be live in the cloud. You can get reports. You can convert Power BI to a PowerPoint. It's and so it's so true. We have we have customers. You know, it's like I think many. Uh, this almost reminds me. It's like uh, I guess like what what I would say is like recommendations is like when you say don't try to boil the ocean. Also, like don't try to just use one system for everything, right? Yeah. Uh, because there's no way that every system does everything. And if they think they do, then they probably do a lot of it really poorly, right? Yeah. So like you know, machine metrics we try to provide a ton out of the box use cases that you can start from day one. But a good example is like, why would we ever rebuild Microsoft Power BI or Tableau or Clipfolio or Amazon like site, you know, uh, what is it called, uh, QuickSight? Because the, those tools already exist. All you need is to be able to zap data from one system into those. And then you've got like, you know, forever, you know, use cases, you know, build your own apps, build your own, you know, dashboards. And we have a lot of customers that do that just because um, it's the fastest, most effective way to get the best possible product. Right. Um, and I think that it, that's a really good rule of thumb, I think, in general. Yep. And, and another thing, too, would be, you know, uh, we go in and we help customers measure OEE, right? So you got this availability, performance, and quality, right, of acceptance. Um, you know, OE by itself is a good metric, high level, but it's not the only part of that equation, Right. Um, you know, knowing when your machine's available for production, knowing how that machine is running performance wise, like, so you quoted to make 10 pieces an hour and it's only making uh, four pieces an hour. That's where you're looking at performance, right? And then acceptance is another big one. Um, a lot of people just think it's, oh, if I scrap the part, it's not just about scrapping a part, it's first yield pass, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, I made it off the machine, ran for two hours, made the part, oh, one of the holes a little on the side, I can fix that on the bridge board over here and I'll drill the hole. Well, by the way, you just lost those two hours on a machine because it didn't come off finished the way it was supposed to. Now you had to do secondaries, right? So first pass yield is very important in looking at acceptance, right? And you need to look at those three different um, uh, metrics individually, right? Not just look at OE and that's it, right? And compare. You got to look at them individually. And then, you know, going back to the Power BI and other sources, you know, one machine might have a different um, perspective to look at where another one, like you might, you're not going to look at like a, a Mazak Integrex the same way I'm looking at a two axis Haas lathe, right? Because by the way, first of all, the cost difference, right? But because of all the different functionality in that Mazak compared to the Haas, not putting either one down, you know, putting Haas down, but just look at it, um, you know, it's more important to see what's going on in that maze act because it's doing milling, it's doing turning, it's doing drilling, it's doing front, back, side, all different things on there, right? It's so more maybe variable. There's some other information you want to know. Totally, to totally. Yeah, there's more variables, and every machine is kind of different, right? And yep. uh, you know, that's a yeah, you know, that's a critical piece is being able to you know get that unique data from each machine, but then also you know be able to translate that, transform it into something that you can use, and that's something that we've spent. Year, really years doing something that nobody really wants to actually do. And that, you know, that's where the depth of knowledge on these machines is really effective. And it sounds like that's where, you know, Michael, it sounds like your team can be a really, you know, great asset for companies who are, you know, yep. trying to build out these roadmaps to, uh, you know, to successful implementation. 
Um, you know, for me, um, you know, this has been really great. I uh, really enjoyed like hearing some of your anecdotes and, and strategies around helping companies drive. I have no doubt that, you know, you're an asset to any of these companies that you work with. And, and, and Michael, maybe if you wanted to give out like just, to, you know, some contact information, you know, if anybody, um, you know, has any questions for Michael, um, you know, after this webinar, you're welcome to reach out to him directly. Um, Mike, uh, care to give them some, uh, where do we, where do we find information about you guys? So uh, websites, uh, pureprecision.us. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. Just look up my name, Michael Unman at LinkedIn, or look up Pure Precision on LinkedIn. I have a company page there. Um, and the best way to you know connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, I'm big on LinkedIn. I have a lot of contacts. And, and you know if we can't help you solve the problem, I know somebody who can help to solve the problem for you, right? I have a lot of networks, uh, networks there to help solve problems. Um, uh, you know, and, and we're there to help and, and we're there to help the client, you know, do better, right? Help to make sure it's a successful implementation. It's awesome. And we, uh, you know, as, as many people have, you know, seen uh, throughout this year, really our top theme this year is about ecosystems of value, right? And, you know, no company does this alone. Uh, we can accelerate value by working together between people, between systems, um, and, and that's something we've been pushing really hard and we really appreciate you joining us, Mike, in that series. Thank uh, thanks for the time. Uh, for those of you that joined us, thanks for staying to the end. Hope it was valuable to you guys. Uh, if anyone didn't know what TEEP is, now they do now, uh, which is a great, a, a great a measurement, one of my favorites. And uh, we look forward to sending out the recording of you guys joining us for our next webinar. So thanks again, everyone. Thank you very much. All right, bye now. Bye-bye.